I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and you are here for your fix, so pump up that vein and grit your teeth for this injection of top tier, medical grade, 5v5 action. We have the North team and the South team facing off against each other, so let's meet them without any further ado. In this peninsula position for the North team, we have Count Swagula. He is 1200 rated, he's Eon in red. Moving on to their mainland, we have Mutso, who is 1100 rated, and UEF, he's playing in electric pink. In what I imagine will be the air position for North Team, this is Sanoman, who is 1500 rated, he's Cybron in white. And unsurprisingly also Cybron, this is Cybron Noob, he is 1100 rated, and he is in lime green and he's opened first air so we'll see if he's going to go for any interesting plays here he's also gone straight for the hydro and mexes with no p gens before the hydro despite having gone first air so maybe he'll power store there's not much tree reclaim to pick up there anyway last but not least for team north this is twitchy mofo who is 1500 rated he's seraphim in yellow and let's meet their mirrors in the south in their peninsula position this fellow is echo tan who is 1100 rated and eon and for reasons best known to himself he has picked fico brown moving on to their mainland we have qqq who i'm going to be referring to as Q. So he is 1300 rated and he's Cybron in Mauve. In their air position we have none other than Hyper 2001, 1400 rated and Seraphim and he's in Grass Green. Moving on around the side we have Green Hatch 2288. He's 800 rated, he's UEF, he is indeed in green, specifically he's in light green, and he, like his mirror, has opened first air. First air, second navy, not often you see that. And last but not least, this is Wekatha, 1600 rated, the highest rated player in today's game. <coughs> he is Eon, and he is in baby pink. So what have we got map-wise? Well, the first thing to note is, holy cow, look at all that reclaim. There's a vast amount of reclaim just around the back and on the islands, but the middle island has a particular glut of rocks, and much so is the first to get there. Both he and Senoman, and indeed Cyber and Noob, have sent their comms to the middle, while Wekatha and Hat have gone for naval builds first, so South Team definitely first into the naval game, but North Team much more aggressive for that reclaim. <coughs> and Twitchy has come in to try and pick up some of this reclaim from Echo, and it looks like he's going to. Echo has his comm here, he has more units here, Twitchy is going to be forced away in the end, but he can just dip into the water. Nice to drop by Cybron to this central plateau, where he's got a lot of NGs and he's going to be putting up a factory and probably some radar, and then reclaiming all that delicious reclaim. Twitchy has indeed been forced into the water, but a quick look at the reclaim figure shows that he has 1.8k to Echo's 440. So, Twitchy definitely got the best of that reclaim deal there. Hat has already sent out a submarine to try and deny the North team getting into the water, and he might because this is the only naval yard they've started so far. Oh no, I tell a lie, we've almost got one finished from Twitchy as well, but. Three naval yards completed for the south team before the north team have finished even one. That could be important. And Swagula has also dropped that plateau there. So definite reclaim advantage going down for the north team. 
And in fact, they let's see how much they're ahead in reclaim. Well, only 2,000 actually, only 1,000. I would have expected more, but they have collected nearly 5,000 overall mass more during the course of the game, so they've obviously been investing all that into eco quite quickly. Indeed, there's Cybern asking who needs mass. He must be overflowing. Now, we have an attempted drop of Zooey's from Hyper, but that just got shot down by this horde of Sky Slammers that Cybern's put up on the plateau, so good move there. Hat Submarine is indeed trying to deny this naval construction from Salaman. And he's stopped the torpedo launch going up. He's taken out the engineer, so he's certainly seeing some success there. But we have to look at this. There's a delicious bomber down here, which has got two kills, and it's about to get an awful... Ow! That is pain. 13 kills on that bomber for Sanoman, taking out engineers from his opposite number. And Hype has got out an Inti and a anti-air Iaissa and he shoots it down but 13 engineer kills from one bomber that is pretty impressive Aurora's trying to knock Twitchy out of the water but Twitchy has a frigate Twitchy has Zooey's the Aurora's will beat the Zooey's but the frigates of which he's now got two will 100% beat the Aurora's and Echo's going to have to fall back if he doesn't just want to lose them all Meanwhile, Wekatha's frigates have got to Swagula before he can get any units into the water. And the build power is all cleaned up. I think that Swag is going to be finishing that sub. And he does, but he won't be in time to save this naval yard. He's also got a couple of Auroras coming to help out, but as we just mentioned, frigates are an excellent counter to Auroras. Out of all the frigates, I think, because they fire slightly slower, I would like the Eon ones least against Auroras, but they're still going to take these out. No problem, and Swag is out of the water. Meanwhile, Wekatha is attempting a landing on Swag's peninsula. And look at this work from Hat. Hat has taken out that factory, and he's bringing his subs down, but he's going to have to hurry if he wants to stop Mutso getting more done because Mutso has a heavily assisted naval yard that already has submarines out and he's already got a torpedo launcher defending it up here. So I don't think Hat's going to be in time to kick Mutso out of the water. And Shrug's got his comm down here to rebuild the naval yard. The submarines from Hat come in to try and kick him out and work with his frigates come back, but Swag's getting a few subs out. And I know this looks like it might be another naval win for the South, and in case you hadn't guessed, Navy's gonna be pretty important on this water map. But Mutso sending in subs, and there's only two subs from Hat. All of these are frigates who can't return fire on the subs. So that might be enough to save Swag from this attack. Although Wekatha is also bringing in subs of his own. We will have to see how that plays out. The naval yard does go down and w wisely Wekatha and Hat are falling back towards their production. Looks like Wekatha's engineers have been seen off by Swags, who have built a point defence there. Oh, but good engagement from Wekatha there, as the subs targeted the frigates. That meant that Hat subs were free to target the subs against them, and so... Mutso is going to have to rebuild. in the the frigates from Wicketha come to fight those Auroras from Swag. And as this attack comes in from Wicketha, we have subs coming in from Echo, taking out Twitchy's naval production, and Twitchy has frigates, and Twitchy has Zooey's, and that's all very well and good for surface fire, but none of that can stop subs. But we do have a torp bomber out from Cybran, 
which will pick off the subs in time but that's one naval yard already down and another about to go down twitchy has got t2 capacity but will it be enough down goes his second naval yard meanwhile though we've got to see these zooies coming in kills brought his come forward looks like there was an attack round there but it looks like kills too deep and Q's got subs in here, which are going to help out. Echo's got a few Auroras. Auroras would have countered the Zooies, but they didn't move. And Echo might be about to lose his T2 naval yard. That would be a bit of a loss. Meanwhile, on the left, Hat has brought in a destroyer, which is able to clean all this up. And these Auroras, they look like a formidable force, but that group of frigates should be more than enough to stop them and that destroyer can do a lot of damage so if I was swag I would be worried meanwhile though the Zooies have if in the end been cleaned up and look at that look at that that ha HQ nope it's down it's down to these Zooies but most of the Zooies are dead but he's gonna have to rebuild his navy and he can't rest on his lovers cause look at this we have Yenzine hover tanks coming in and smacking out Echo's Eco and look at them just at one, two, three mixes already and now they're getting into his power. This could be brutal because what does Echo have that can stop those things? On the left meanwhile lots of subs, lots of auroras. The subs will be able to take out the frigates and the destroyer cleans them up first but this is good work from the south team but now there are torp bombers also in from Mutzo and it could be enough to see off the attack the attack has covered though for this we have a little landing from Wekatha so that's um, if that's allowed to get established it could hurt the northern team quite a bit and the Yenzines have just carried on that because they can hover they're just completely ignoring this blockade from Q and they're heading in towards Q's unprotected power storage could set off a nice chain reaction and Echo is pursuing with these Auroras but they're not going to catch him in time he's also bombing them and that might take them out but it's going to take a while And that bomber will clear them up. We'll have to check back and see what damage has been done to Q in the meantime. So we've got quite a lot of T2 Navy on the field now. I see Destro's out from both Wekatha and Hat over here. Destro's and Cruisers out from Q on this side, fighting off this Destro from Twitchy. Cybern has yet to get any T2, as has Senoran, but Mutso is also at T2, and there's, I think, his first destroyer coming out as we speak. Swag is still relying on these blazes, though, and they're not really enough at this stage. A lot of blazes would be good to swarm a couple of Eon destroyers on their own because of the slow fire of an Eon destroyer. Oh, Torp Bomb is out from um, Mutso though. He is switching in as much air as a navy to counter the southern fleets. But these guys trickling in on their own feel like a mistake with multiple T2 naval units facing them. Meanwhile, watch this. Q has been trying to defend against incoming units with T2 point defense there for Echo, but Twitchy has picked up a bunch of Zooies and just flown them straight over his head. And this could be, there's a T2 mass extractor here, which might be taken out. And this one and this one were both on upgrades. So that is quite a brutal hit from Twitchy and the Auroras from Echo are going to clean it up, but that eco damage to Echo, echo damage to eco, eco damage to Echo, is going to hurt him quite a bit after having these knocked out by that Yenzine raid 
not so long ago. So that's pretty nice. How are we looking elsewhere? I was wondering whether Mutso was going to head for T3 Air after having put so much into Torp Bombers, because that would be quite nice if both Mutso and Sanoman went for T3 Air. Sanoman is already at T3 as the air player with production, PGENs, or that sort of thing. How's Hyper doing? Hyper actually has a bigger air grid, so there might be a slight advantage to the south in terms of air unless Mutsu were to double down on it. Oh, and it looks like Twitchy tried another drop, but you can see that the flak started hitting that and damaging both the transport and the units on board, so he's been forced to retreat. Meanwhile, let's have a look at Eco. North team are nearly a, over a hundred ahead. That is quite brutal. And let's see where it's coming from. Sanoman has the most, and that's some pretty nice balance. He's balancing his power quite well, but he can afford to because he's got 24,000 storage. I say that, but actually look at this. Swag is shedding power, and even with a master, so he cut... Oh, not quite a master yet, but oh, he picks it back up there. Maybe... Did Sanoman just get another? Yes, he did. So that was pretty close. Lots of people on the red line for power. Maybe they all need a bit more power storage. I always do power storage just in case something like that happens. But overall, pretty good balance from North Team. Very good eco from Hyper. A lot of spending from Q. Where's it all going? Oh, he's heavily assisting a mech up to T3 there, and as we can see, that resolves it pretty soon. Good balance from Wekatha. Echo might need to spend a tiny bit more, but he's getting on the ball there and doing just that. And good balance from Hat. I'm seeing much more good balance in terms of eco in the games I've been casting recently, and I should probably practice that a bit myself. You know, when I'm... I always find myself thinking, oh, this is fine, I'll just build a couple more factories, and then suddenly I'm horrifically mastered, and I'm wondering where it all went. I also think I overbuild power a bit, because there I am talking about people being on the bridge line for power. That just means they haven't built more than they need, and I always find myself overflowing a bit. But then, I also like that a bit, because it means that I can overcharge more and I do love Cinema I come to the front line. Cybron has control K these factories and Twitchy is coming in to reclaim them. And we it looks like we've had a push from Swag but he didn't until just then get Mutso in support. And that means that this significant T2 Navy from Wekatha and Hat is likely to see it off. And I like this just a little patrol of Inties from Hat because we've been seeing Mutso putting out more torp bombers and that will help just counter that threat. Although there is a cruiser here from ha, was a cruiser from Mutso picking them off. And Swag is forced to fall back. Meanwhile, that is a that was a huge drop from Twitchy, but he lost one of his transports and was forced by this cruiser from Q to drop it all here. However, I think he's going to try and come in and hit this naval yard, which will be a huge pickup if he could get it, because it's seventy percent of the way to T three, and so. If he can take that out, that's going to be a massive investment that Q would have lost. How is Q going to respond? Well, he's immediately falling back his navy, which means that this navy from Twitchy and Cyber has a chance to push in and do some damage to Echo while Q is busy defending his naval yard. Now, the amount of repairs that that naval yard is getting from this horde of engineers means it's going to survive. I'm surprised that Twitchy didn't push in and do a bit more because now Q can just bring his units back 
and Echo will be able to defend against the northern team quite happily. And the exchange of fire continues. Lot of submarine power there for Cybron, but a lot of destroyers there for Q. And in order to deal with this stuff on the surface, we've got Echo bringing in his Blaze assault tanks. And I think that South Team are going to safely defend there. Meanwhile, quite the build up from Hat and Wekatha on the other side. And the shield boats are going to help out massively. Down goes the shield, but down goes the destroyer from Mutso. And as yet, Hat hasn't lost any of his dudes, as Mutso is. I think I saw Hat lose one. Actually, maybe I didn't, but Mutso is forced to fall back once again. And this desultory exchange of shots continues. There are the torpedo bombers coming in from Mutso, but these flak turrets from Hatch just to smack them out. And Mutso is going to need a much bigger force of torp bombers if he wants to get anything done against the shields, cruisers, and flak of this navy. How are we looking overall? Hyper has been focusing on ASFs here, whereas it seems like we've got more in the way of air to ground, or in this case air to water, from Salaman. So, oh no, we do have a decent clutch of ASFs here. I don't know who would win if they were to take an air fight, though neither of them has the motivation to right now, so I don't think we're going to see anything big going down just yet. However, now it looks like it's beginning to kick off as we have a monkey. The experimental phase has begun and this monkey lord here from Q. Why is it called a monkey lord? Why is it not a spider lord? What makes... How many monkeys have you seen with six legs and no tail? bombers trying to hit the naval yard or possibly that battleship there because we do now have a f battleship out for kill the first t3 naval unit on the field and those top bombers from Salaman are hitting Q and echo's navy hard air cause Q he needs support and hyper brings it in are we about to see our first real air engagement We are. And it's over the bases of Q and Echo, so that might give Hyper a bit of an advantage. But we're seeing some lovely turns from Salaman here. And I think Salaman is actually going to take quite a hard air win right there. That could set the southern team back a lot. Especially as we were mentioning Mutso's construction of torp bombers to help out his air attack now his team has air they have however also seen the monkey that's coming for them and it's not the only XP on the field because I wondered what all those engines were doing down there with hypers come in the water he's got Raz, he's got T3 and he is building XP's and there is a chicken walking out for hyper Good naval defense here, a harms torpedo launcher, tech free anti air SAMs, and of course, battleships. So, this is looking to be a very solid production area for Q. And what have I missed up here? Look at this tactical missile launchers out from Echo, and they've taken out. Twitchy's naval HQ, they're taking out his naval production. This is a beautiful attack snipe. And with Q at T3 Navy and now Twitchy at own back to only T1, this could really make the difference. Cybron does have T2 here and he's bringing a few Death in, but they won't be a match for that battleship. 
But that said, is that a battleship wreck there? Yeah, one battleship's already been sunk by those torp bombers. And without air, it's going to be a difficult job for South Team to respond very well to that. But this monkey is about to come out and there's really nothing in the water or above it to defend from it because of course Twitchy has been focusing on naval production so that attack missile snipe he's bringing these zooies in to defend against the monkey but I don't actually like that he should have waited until it was up here shooting this way and then dropped behind it because now those zooies are just free vet for the monkey look at it eat them up and I feel that Twitchy is about to suffer a huge amount of damage. As the monkey just comes wading in. Look at the brutality. That air HQ is going down. I strongly suspect the land HQ is going down too. Come on, Mr. Monkey. Take out that land HQ. It's right there. You just have to shoot it. The power is going down. That is a nice little gunship coming in to help from Salaman and I think it will deal with the monkey in the end. And several of the Salems from Cyber Noob have come up onto the land to shoot at the monkey. Look at that, that's beautiful. Cyber on Cyber brutal action. Did I just portmanteau brutal and beautiful? Brutal. That's my word of the day, and look at poor Twitchy, he's gone down from 102 messages 46, his tech has been smashed all the way back to tech 1, he's rebuilt his T2 naval yard, but this battleship however, he is able to swarm with the Enzines, and he's got some destroyers still in the field, so that battleship is going down, nice play. Meanwhile, on the other side, that chicken from Hyper has made it up to swag's base and swag is beginning to lose his eco one mech's down another mech's down come on my dude walk walk take another turn on the catwalk baby air help comes in from Sanoman as corsairs attack the chicken and these nice long-range destroyers for swag who does now have t3 naval production look like they're gonna be able to take it but how much will swag lose first it's already killed nearly 15k mass three mechs is down the land hq given how much um swag has been relying on hover spam would be nice but i don't know down it goes okay so th that pair of xps and of course the Iron Storm will stay in Swag's base and do a bit more damage. That pair of XBs has been really great for Southern Team. And look at that, they're now 300 mass per tick in the lead. So that was an epic attack. However, now they need to convert that lead into something good. And it's they've got to be careful because this is a huge attack from the air from Sanoman. Torpedo bomb is coming straight for the naval HQ of Wekatha and it's down into the red. 1200 hit points remaining. Hyper's air engages. Taking out most of the torp bombers, but are there still enough to take it out? Boom! Yes, there are. So Wekatha is forced back to the T1 Navy as the torp bombers continue their attacks, and now we have these boys right here these corsairs smashing into what's left there's flak in the water from Wekatha and Hyper has finally cleaned up the air to ground but Sanoman still has this huge air force and it is going to shred Hyper's despite the flak from Wekatha ouch So Salaman has lost a lot of air power and Hyper still has a bit, but the damage to Wekatha is real. And on top of that, Salaman still, I think, has air control. However, Hat is pushing up into the side of Mutzel's production with quite a significant T2 Navy. 
And much so, though it's very heavily assisted, look how fast that destroyer is going up. He's still only at T2 and has 10 more destroyers queued up before he goes for T3. And seeing this large force, Hat falls back. Now, while that's happening, Twitchy is back in the water with a decent range of these T2 factories, all of them producing destroyers. But four Galaxy class battleships supported by cruisers, five of them, to stop any air attacks such as we just saw mashing Wekatha and Hat. And they could put quite the dent in the naval production for North Team once again. It looks like they're on course straight to take out this naval HQ. That's what I will be doing in their position. But looks like we're gonna have to worry about what's going on down here because this is an air snipe a big air snipe against hyper a wave of corsairs and his air grid is the target look at that look at that perfectly targeting the two central pigeons so that when they explode there's gonna be a huge chain look at that my dudes fear Hyper's pain as his air grid goes up in smoke. His HQ is still alive. It's down here. He's got a nuke. He's got a nuke launcher under two shields, and that's the next target. And it's half loaded. This could be horrific. Boom! The nuke launcher goes up. So Hyper's lost his half his air grid. He's lost his nuke launcher. That is horrific. What's he going to do about it? Do you know what he's going to do about it, my dudes? He's in the red. Boom, he is going to die. But that just feels like adding insert to injury after the amount of damage that just got inflicted on him. I mean, the HQ is still there for now. But that was painful. Here on the left, we have this huge naval engagement. Wekatha's back to T3. Well, okay, he's got a T3 and he's most of the way back to being able to make more T3 after that hit we saw earlier. And he's also got a Tempest under construction there. But this m is a massive engagement. On the other side, though, that is six galaxies from Q. They have indeed taken out Twitchy's naval HQ, which he's going to have to rebuild in order to use these factories. But Senaman's air is coming in pretty much uncounted by, well, Q's inherited what used to belong to Hyper, but that's enough cruisers to take it out. So, Sanoman is actually going to be under quite a bit of threat, at least in terms of naval production. He's got a mega mostly built, but mostly built isn't fully built, and that is still five galaxies moving in. And if they can take out his T3 naval HQ, that could hurt a lot. And the line still holds for Wekatha, who's also managed to put these little um, factories up on Swag's Peninsula. And if this factory, this fat boy from Hat, pops out here, that could really turn the tide in their favour. Corsairs coming in from Swag, trying to smash down these galaxies. And one more goes down, but he's still got four. What are they targeting? They're targeting the anti-nuke. I suspect that we are about to see a nuclear strike on Sanoman. And if Q can get that off, that's going to be pretty nice. These galaxies are still holding up and the strategic missile defense is down. Now, if I were Q, I would not immediately be targeting that HQ. And there's the nuke and it's going for Sanoman. This could hurt a lot. South team currently have a 100 eco lead. How long is that going to last? There is actually an SMD right there, but it's not loaded from much so. And ready for this, ready for this pain. Boom! Ouch! Look at that! Can you 
empathize with the horror in Sanaman's eyes as he loses his air grid. He loses his HQ as well. He loses all his mass. And look at that. That was 200 mass difference that just got added in favor, leaving the South team 300 mass in the lead. That's immense. Good work from Hat popping this fatty out of the water and using it to bombard the Navy from Swag and Mutso. And Wreck of the Navy also going, doing a good job. And the Tempest finishes up. I think that fatty's about to die, but it's so probably going to pay for itself in terms of raw damage output. And while these units are focusing the fatty, they're not focusing the Tempest, which is opening fire. Boom. A shield pops up from Mutso and down goes the chatty. F's in the chat for that fatty, but look at the damage the Tempest is doing. It's already got 2,000 mass killed and it hasn't even taken any damage yet. But on the mini map, I am seeing this coming in. Look at this. Look at this. This is an immense, immense air raid. Mutsu targets the Tempest and Richter's T3 Naval Yard is once again the target of the Corsairs. But it is, his comm is the target of the Torp Bombers. I think you might die if they get another pass. Green's out of the water. But they do get another pass. He's not surviving that. Boom! Down goes Wekatha, and it is now 5v3 in favour of the Northern team. And that Tempest is shot down, sunk rather, I guess, by these Torp Bombers. And suddenly, what is there left over here? Almost nothing. Okay, a battleship and a fatty isn't really nothing, but... Is it enough to hold off this approaching force? But... There's now 500 eco lead for the um, South team, but how are they going to convert it into something that can actually stop all this? Over on the other side, though, it is the, those tactical missiles are still doing work as they smash out poor old Twitchy's mexes, and they're keeping him down. The Navy from Q has advanced, and the Mega is Twitchy's only defense. Luckily, Sanoman has managed to rebuild enough. Has he actually, actually, has he got an HQ again? I don't know if he has. I think those are just left over. San Sanoman comes to his aid with a bunch of whalers, but there's enough cruisers from Q just to drive them away again, and a GC is walking through the water towards uh, Twitchy's base. Now, the GC can't do anything to damage the Mega while it's in the water, but the Mega looks like it's actually under the water, so it can't actually shoot the GC unless it backs up and comes out. And this is a little tactical missile base, and the Mega does back up and come out, but I don't think it's going to stop the GC from taking out this tasty little... Okay, maybe it is because the GC has turned to fire on the Mega. And normally I'd say that's a mistake, but with all the damage that Q's Navy has already done to the Mega, the Mega just runs away into the water. But it's going to die there too because of all these destroyers. And so out the Mega comes again as Cybron's base is smashed up and down goes that SMD as Q launches another nuke. Where's it going? Looks like, it, is it going to be a defensive nuke trying to take up this navy, or is it going for Swag's base? Or is it going for, it's certainly going for somewhere in here, is it going for the navy production? I would probably target the naval production rather than Swag's actual base. And, ooh, he's got an anti-nuke, but it's not loaded. He's assisting it so hard. But apparently so hard isn't hard enough because... Boom! Swag's base is up in smoke. However, Hat is in trouble because he now has nothing, nothing at all to defend from this navy. 
and while well, South team have this insane eco lead of they're now a thousand ahead a thousand mass per tick ahead what are they doing with it but Sanoman's lack of air production is beginning to show because Q is pushing in and last time he was seen off from the air but this time there's very little that the northern team can do about it and this is quite a big force though outside I'm only seeing like one battleship in there and we have a wave of strats okay looks like we've still got some air there though from Salaman and those strats basically achieved zero that was a huge waste of mass for poor Q they didn't even finish off that T3 Max or that one so I think Q might have been a little surprised by the fact that Salaman still had a bit of air. He has has he actually got a T3 HQ back up yet? He must do. Yes, there it is. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to build those. But now there are torrents. Wreck the drill base being smashed by this fatty. Hats. What's left of Hats actual base being smashed by these torrents. But the story is going the other way on the other side as a swarm of blazes has just consumed Twitchy's base and despite this very heavily damaged mega in the water torrents from Echo are smashing Cybran's base so round and round it goes yin and yang here and here but who is going to be able to get the killing blow in first And now Mutso has brought his navy back round here to stop Q. And with top bombers from Senoman, the mega still from Twitchy, which is still alive somehow, having killed 90,000 mass and on four vets. And this horde of battleships from Mutso, the galaxies from Q look like they're in a little bit of trouble. And these torrents had better fall back lest they just get overrun by Q's T2 and indeed it looks like one of them's trying actually does it well by much so's T2 anyway Q is falling back so he he pings this navy to come and help but it may be too little too late Strategic launch detected. but the nukes are still going and that's quite nice. That's going to kill a cyber. It's going to kill the pr Salem production ability where the Salems have just been walking across the land. And it might also take up the Naval HQ, which Twitchy put up here so it didn't get sniped. Will it get Twitchy as well? Cybern is warned to move. Boom! But we can see Twitchy walking away in the distance there. 42 minutes and that's the first ejection from North Team. South Team still have the better eco but despite despite this, look how much work that fat boy has done and those torrents in just smashing up the eco for South Team. but. And our Wasser experimental bomber is finished for Q, and this fat boy is completely undefended from the air, so I reckon that is going down. So might this one, though, which is following it up at some distance back, and good air defense from Q in case Salaman sends in his air force. The fatty's shield go is still up somehow, but it's taken a lot of damage from the blast of that hit. And I reckon that the second one is just going to say it. Boom. Down goes that fatty, saving Q's base just in time. And the arsewasher comes back for a second pass on the second fatty. However, in comes Sanoman with his air. And Q's air is out of position. And that arsewasher is going to have its ass washed for it or at least handed to it by that wave of ASFs who just claim it for free. Sanaman loses nothing in that exchange 
and this fatty is still alive for Mutso. Meanwhile, Mutso's navy is also pushing around this side and suddenly South Team are very much on the defensive and the Ecos, despite that 1000 mass lead that we saw earlier, the Ecos are level again. How, how, how did that happen? Well, um, I mean that's how it happened, but you, you knew what I meant. And this navy, which has a nuke sub in it as well, how loaded is that? Ha! Huh. That's how loaded it is! Going straight for the air grid. However, there's an anti nuke in here. Boom. And it is popped out of the sky. Good wave of gunships from Q taking out this navy. Uh, and there are actually no cruisers in here, so they're, they're just going to eat up this navy and their Salaman brings in his air force. But that SMD might be about to fall. Build another SMD quick, says Hyper. And that's not bad advice. Why have, but these gunships have landed and that's going to be a huge error as in comes Salaman and he's... He's going to eat them for free yet again. Look, look at that, they're all, they're all just dropping out of the sky and Q's dudes are out of position, but Q has launched another nuke. Where's it going? Is it going to be able to get two comms at once? That could be amazing for South Team if that hits. And but Salaman has an SMD loaded and just in range and it blocks the nuke. Nice play. And now Q is losing a lot of the mechs in his base. He's trying for an artillery but I don't think that's going to be going up. Meanwhile Twitchy has got multiple megas constructed and they're coming onto Echo's Peninsula. And this Hero Tactical Missile Battery, which has taken out so much of the Eco and Naval Yards, is about to be knocked down. And sure, a GC is a GC, but one GC is not going to be countering two Megas. That many battleships might, though. And if this Mega is going to be used to full effect, then Mutso needs to push in with this Navy in order to t draw the fire of the battleships and indeed he is drawing the fire of those battleships. Both Echo and Q have these battleships out and the naval engagement is going down but every moment these battleships are up here fighting these torrents are being allowed to fire unchecked on the base of Q who has lost his SMD and a harm's creep is all very well and that battleship will be going down to them but it can't stop all the stuff over here and now the gunships are attacking this immense line of T1 spam production that Mutso is throwing up but I mean does that does that really matter at this stage when there's this force charging in here And just look at this, it's suddenly looking bleak on all fronts for South Team as multiple fat boys from Mutso are coming out of the water in support of this megalith. And there's only like a quarter of map control, Twitch is rebuilding here. The bases of Wekafer and Hat are just being colonised by the North Team. A lot of this navy has actually been taken out by the Harms Creepers it has, as the battleships have to get closer to do damage. And there's a chicken also opening fire on them. Q says GG and to be honest, who can blame him? Make sure you have tele defense, says Swag. Cause and if I were Q, I might be doing that. Meanwhile Hat, who did does have shields, is being targeted by the torp bombers. Will he make it out of the water? He's into the red. So he was down to just 1600 hit points there and he makes it out of the water, but really, what's he going to do when he gets out of the water? 
kill resigns and those fatties are bombarding Echo and there's just n even after the fire from the battleships Echo resigns too and Hat is left all on his own walking into a war of aurorers ready to deal with a killing blow respect to him for walking in there and taking the honourable way out but boom despite having been up to a thousand maths behind at some points during the game after an epic naval battle a horrific war of attrition north team have taken the win what a game there were several times when i thought south team would would, would just crack them like when monkey from i don't know this enough draw little arrows monkey there from q and chicken there from hyper at that time i thought that that would be it and that north team would have been completely broken but no they they built up they came back tell me what you thought in the comments below who was mvp i think that initial t1 bomber just taking out 13 of hyper's ngs but do you agree while you're down there commenting and telling me that please don't forget to like subscribe and obey i am the commissar i will see you next time